Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Today, I'm going to discuss the top five handrail installation defects and how to get them right. So why am I talking about stairway handrails? It's because if you live in the city of Minneapolis and you're selling your home, you're required to have a stairway handrail. If you don't have one, you need to put in a new one and the new one needs to meet current code requirements. It needs to be perfect, it needs to meet all the requirements for a brand new home. So I'm gonna go through those one by one here. Number one, the most common thing that people end up getting wrong is not having the ends returned to the wall. The whole idea is that the handrail needs to begin and end at a wall. You can't have a post sticking out into the air that a fire rescue person or somebody else could go running past and catch their strap on and then get stuck at the bottom of the stairway or get pulled over or people could catch their clothing on a woman's purse strap could catch on this all these different things you don't want to have that so handrail ends need to be returned to the wall it means they start and end at the wall the next most common defect is improper handrail height. The current standard for a handrail is that it needs to be mounted 34 to 38 inches above the nose of the stairway. What's the nose? It's the tip of each stairway tread. So if you were to take a long piece of wood and you just laid it down on the stairway at an angle, you would measure straight up from anywhere along that, that uh, diagonal plane. Since most people aren't going to take the time to do that, what you typically do is you just take your tape measure and you measure from the tip of any of those stair treads straight up and you're measuring to the top of the handrail. So that needs to be somewhere between 34 and 38 inches. Back in the day on old handrails, the requirement was 30 to 34 inches. I think people used to be shorter back then. I'm not sure, but that's the old requirement. Number three, Handrails need to be continuous. You need to be able to walk from the bottom of the stairway to the top of the stairway without removing your hand from the handrail. If you've got big newel posts coming up, breaking that continuity of the handrail, it's not a proper installation. If you have sections where the handrail stops and then begins again, it's not continuous. If you have a big landing, 36 inches by 36 inches, or larger, then you have an end of a stairway and you have a new stairway beginning after the landing. At that point, it is permissible to break the continuity. But for most other situations, you need to have one single handrail, no breaks in it. A defect that's not very common inside the house is that the handrail needs to be grippable or graspable, we'll sometimes say. You need to have something essentially that's round that you can put your hand around. The most common defect we find is on outdoor handrails where people will just take a single 2x4 and they'll use that. That's not something that you can easily wrap your hand around. So it needs to be grippable, not a common defect inside the house, but it does happen. And then finally, number five, the handrail needs to be mounted the proper distance from the wall. You need room for your hand to get in there and wrap around the handrail. If you don't have at least one and a half inches away from the wall, it's considered too close. And I'll tell you, you might think I'm being nitpicky as a home inspector when I write this up, but I don't go around using my tape measure checking to make sure that everyone is correct. All I do is I put my hand on the handrail. If it's closer than one and a half inches, I can notice right away because my knuckle hits on the wall. At uh, one and a half inches is pretty much perfect. One and a quarter, I will know it. I will, I will smack my knuckle on the wall and then I'll take my tape measure out, I'll measure it real quick and I'll make a note. It's a little too close to the wall. So those are the top five installation errors with handrails. And real quick, let's come, let's come back to the beginning. These are required in the city of Minneapolis. This change went into effect back in 2017 where the city of Minneapolis said, if you don't have a handrail, you need to put one up. If you do have a handrail and it's not properly installed, well, it, it gets noted in the report. It's below minimum requirements, 
but you don't need to bring it up to current standards. It's only when you are completely missing a handrail that you need to put in a new one and it needs to meet current codes. So that's the skinny on handrails. These rules do apply to handrails inside and outside the house, but most of the defects we end up finding are inside. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck on your handrail installation. Take care.